You're very welcome to this talk. Now, it's been a few years since oncologist uh, Professor Angus Dalgleish warned us about the risks of cancers. After COVID vaccines, of course, he was ignored and, and poo-pooed. Uh, we've now seen evidence from Italy, and here we see the largest scale study so far from South Korea. So quick headlines of what this video is about, so you can decide if you want to watch. Overall cancer rate was increased by 27% uh, in the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated for the COVID vaccine. So that was the overall increase in cancers, specifically 53% increase in lung cancer, 69% increase in prostate cancer, 35 increase uh, in um, thyroid cancer in the vaccinated as opposed to the unvaccinated with COVID vaccines. Uh, gastric stomach cancer, 34% increase, breast 20% increase, uh, colorectal cancers, 28% um, increase. So uh, that was actually Nick Hustler's uh, summary. So thanks for that, Nick. Um, we're going to be looking at this in some detail on this video. Now, this is the paper that it's from here, published in a highly reputable peer-reviewed scientific journal. One year risk of cancers associated with COVID-19 vaccination, a large population based cohort study in South Korea. Very readable paper, very intelligible graphics. Uh, this is the free PDF uh, download. Do check it out for yourself. Um, well, let's look at some of the detail. Um, and remember, this is comparing people with the COVID vaccines and the people that didn't get the COVID vaccines. I wish I'd never taken any. But at the time we were told that it was safe and effective, weren't we? Now that's being questioned. Anyway, onto the detail. This is the study here. There are the links, as always. Large-scale population study. So looking back, retrospective, South Korea, um, to estimate the cumulative incidence um, Cumulative incidence and subsequent risks of overall cancers one year after the COVID vaccines. Now, here's a graphic that sort of summarises their findings and a very unpleasant view it, uh, it is. So what we have here is this is, the, uh, this is the vaccinated line here. So people that are vaccinated, that line there, they get more cancers. This is incidence per 10,000 of the population up here. Uh, people that didn't get the vaccines after a follow-up of 360 days, so that's 360 days. Um, well, theirs is much lower, isn't it? And the difference is about 27% between the two overall. So clear increase in cancers. This is overall cancers. And the... Results of this, this is a P equals 0 0.001. In other words, there's a, there's a one in a thousand chance that this result uh, arose by chance. So this is overwhelmingly likely to be a genuine result. I know, I know. Right, let's stick with the data. Uh, population that the sample was taken from was over 8 million. Uh, they didn't use all of those numbers for purposes of practicality, but very large uh, cohort. Between 20 and 2023, data came from uh, Korean Institute of, Korean National Health Insurance Database. So the Koreans are very good at this kind of stuff. Participants were based into two groups based on their COVID vaccine status. In other words, those that had the vaccine and those that didn't. Now, obviously, because South Korea was a very heavily a vaccinated country uh, there was i can't remember the numbers but just a few hundred thousand in the unvaccinated group but that's good enough to get some pretty good uh, data from um, let's look at the figures now in a bit more detail so thyroid cancer they express this as hazard ratios uh, 1.351 in other words 35 percent increased risk now how sure are we with this as a genuine result well the researchers were 95 percent sure that the actual number lay between 1.2 and 1.5 so that's taken between those two so 95 percent sure it was between those two numbers gastric cancer uh 
So that's basically a 35% increase, isn't it? In vaccinated versus unvaccinated, that one's basically a 33% increase. Uh, colorectogastric, that's the stomach, of course. Um, colorectal, um, colorectal, 28% increase, roughly. Uh, and again, how sure were they of the result? Well, they were 95% sure that it was between 1.22 and one point four. Six, eight. Lung cancer, quite a big increase, 53%. Breast cancer, smaller increase, just under 20%. Prostate cancer, huge, about 68% increase. Um, yeah, so uh, 19, 20% increase in breast cancer, 53% in, in lung cancer. Um, it's hard to see how regulators around the world can just brush this off. They will. They will, I'm sure. Um, or I strongly suspect. Which makes you wonder why they're there, really. It's almost certain. Yeah, we won't go there. Right. Um, now, uh, DNA vaccines like the adenovirus vector vaccines associated with increased risk of, so that was the Johnson & Johnson AstraZeneca, wasn't it? It worked on DNA, associated increased risk of thyroid, gastric, colorectal, lung and prostate for the uh, DNA, adenovirus vector uh, vaccines. mRNA vaccines, uh, specifically thyroid, colorectal, lung and breast, uh, people that had Mix, mixtures, uh, heterolog he heterologous vaccination, uh, thyroid and breast cancers. Um, yeah, and these are all observed associations between COVID vaccination and cancer incidence. They did put a table here. Uh, overall risk there was about 27%, wasn't it? Greater risk, so greater cancer risk. It was here, greater cancer risk uh, for the uh, DNA vaccines. So the AstraZeneca type and the Johnson & Johnson type, greater uh, cancer risk. mRNA vaccines, slightly less, and mixtures, uh, slightly more. Um, vaccinated men, more vul vulnerable to gastric and lung cancer. Vaccinated women, more susceptible to thyroid and colorectal cancers. Population under 65, more vulnerable to thyroid and breast cancers. So thyroid and breast cancers in younger people, particularly younger women. But of course, remember, men can get breast cancer as well. Um, just much less common. Population over 75, more susceptible to prostate cancer. COVID-19 vaccination associated cancer risk more likely, uh, likely more elevated amongst individuals over, sorry, under, that's under 65, isn't it? So basically uh, what they're saying is here, COVID vaccine associated cancer risk was more likely elevated among younger individuals. So this is risk is greater for people under 65, except prostate cancer, where the risk was greater for older people. People that had booster doses more likely to get gastric and pancreatic cancers. And many mechanisms of action are possible. The paper mentioned the renin-angiotensin aldosterone system. This is important because this produces uh, angiotensin 2. Uh, and it's the, it's the ACE receptor that uh, the COVID vaccine binds to, of course. Uh, the uh, spike protein, sorry, the spike protein in the virus binds to. Um you mentioned mutagenicity, inflammatory cascade, underlying molecular mechanisms. We could also mention DNA contamination. We could mention alterations in the immune system. We've looked at that before. So uh, there's the paper. Check it out for yourself. Now, um, as well as that, they do give um, some other cancers that there weren't enough of to reach significance. But here we see some here. Now, just by way of context, uh, the red line is um, the unvaccinated group. 
and the hazard ratio is there. So we see, for example, uh, there is increased, there was increased incidence of brain, uh, a little bit in oral salivary, less oropharyngeal, uh, less laryngo cancer, more esophageal cancer, uh, roughly the same for liver, gallbladder. The, the, all, all the other cancers are all there listed. Um, it's in the article. It's quite intelligible. Um, so, for example, more Carposis sarcoma there. But um, does this mean that um, there is a genuine increase in these cancers? Other than the six we've mentioned, we don't know because the numbers of people getting the cancer, thankfully, weren't enough to register that. So there we have it, um, quite concerning. Um, and of course, that's not to mention the other side effects of the vaccines, blood clotting, uh, postural orthostatic tachycardic syndrome, leg amputation, uh, small nerve fibre neuropathy, constant pain all over, like Brian dressing, tragically. Uh, transverse myelitis and paralysis, as we saw with Michael, who we've interviewed. You know, we've interviewed people who've experienced these things firsthand on the channel. We met Alex. He came He came, He came. came down here. He, we, we had tea. Um Trust me, his leg has been amputated after the vaccine. Um, persistent fatigue syndrome, immune disorders, Guillain-Barre syndrome, Bell's palsy seizures, allergy and anaphylaxis, um, new onset autoimmunity, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune hepatitis, reproductive and menstrual irregularities, infertility, long post-vaccine syndrome, multisystem inflammatory syndrome in children, and of course, some people no longer with us. Um time for a monitorium on these vaccines clearly um, i expect this paper will be largely ignored or those that do address it will probably poo poo it um, but that's the data two doctors and a data scientist from uh, south korea looking at korean data large population size uh, data now uh just before we finish i want to uh just bring this to the attention of people in the United Kingdom. Uh, this is uh, this. Um, this is the government petition uh, that's reached well over two and a half million signatures. Uh, do not introduce digital identity cards. If, if like me, if if like me, you're concerned by this, I put the link there, and you can log on and uh, and you can sign that. Um, now, I hesitated to put this next bit in, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, these digital identity cards, basically, um, you know, it, 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 you can see how it's going to be useful, um, making sure people pay the taxes and everything, but, but um, it can be linked to any computer system, potentially, is my understanding. And... Um, you know, so many people pay for everything with card these days. Um, it's quite possible to imagine a time where cash is not available, not too far away. You know, it costs quite a lot, a lot of money to print all these banknotes. Let, let's just skip it. You know, everyone's got cards anyway. And then it's not a small, big step after that to say, look, um, you know what? Um, there's a lot of people here eating a lot of food and some of them are pretty useless. Um let, 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 maybe we should ration their food. Let, let, let's um, let's just give them um, a certain amount of food um, and we can control the amount of money they're allowed to spend with the digital identity card. Um, it's not That's not too, too big a step. If you have a digital identity card, it becomes possible to control financial transactions. So let's just have a short reading here from Revelation chapter 13. You see, it's not, if you've got a digital identity card, that's going to work because it's got a little chip in it. And, you know, stupid people like you and me, well, we could lose our digital identity card. So why not just, why not just tuck the chip under the skin somewhere like we do with dogs? I mean, my dog's got a chip. So if he gets, if she gets lost, then you, you know, someone scans her and says, oh, oh, that's John Campbell's dog. I'll take her home. You know, great idea. Um, 
But, you know, stupid people like me, I'm always losing things, you know. Put my cards down. I can't remember where I put them. Um, so wouldn't it be much more convenient for, for these stupid people? Um, just have a little chip under the skin. You know, just just put it under in in the right hand or somewhere. Just just a little chip under the skin. Then we can just scan them. Then when you go shopping, you can just scan. But of course, someone with control could limit the amount of transactions that are possible. So anyway, the reading is, and he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond bound, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their forehead, that no man might buy or sell save he had that mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name now <laughs> it sounds melodramatic but you can see this isn't too far off uh, this is this is my fear i remember when i was a boy reading that i must have read the book of revelation for the first time i don't know it was probably about probably about uh, 16 or something like that um and i thought well that's ridiculous you know how can you possibly control what people buy or sell it was inconceivable in those days but now it's a small step to say no you, you can only buy or sell with a card from there it's a small step to say you can only buy or sell with a digital identity card so we can control what you're buying and selling just in case people like you eat too much or fiddle your taxes um not that i'm condoning tax fiddling of course you pay your taxes um but you can see these small incremental steps the technology is now there that this ancient prophecy could be fulfilled in that concerns me and i know it concerns a lot of you so if if if, if it concerns you sign that if you think i'm rambling on uh, you'll have switched off by now already but uh yeah government overreach perhaps you decide not for me to tell you what to think but uh two and a half million people so far seem to agree with my concerns uh, the government will probably ignore it of course but at least we'll have had a small protest right that's all for me um sadly i think that this cancer fear thing will be downplayed and um if if the studies in italy are correct if the studies in south korea are correct uh, they're going to be followed by more uh, data is still being controlled of course in the uk we don't have access to the vaccinated versus unvaccinated data um how, how much worse is it going to get before the dam breaks and there's a sudden shift in people's appreciation i don't know but read the data for yourself see what you think and of course as always thank you for watching